Hi guys, I'm back. It's been a month. It's been a month. Um, welcome. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Ingeborg and the channel is A Stitch Too Far and I talk mainly about my cross stitching uh, and a bit about books and other things that come to mind. Um, I survived mania, my first ever stitch mania. Uh, I chose the path of Senia, I guess. <laughs> and decided to work on my Chatelaine uh, project for this month. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And uh, some things came in the mail. And I fully finished some things because may we finish. And I read a bit. So that's the things that I'm going to talk about. I did not make any notes, so let's hope I don't need to do a lot of editing. <laughs> but I think today is the 1st of June, so Mania is definitely officially over for this year. Um, other things have not yet been uh, fully finished, let's say it like that, including um, Covid hair. <laughs> oh well. Um, I'm very lucky to have a job and be healthy and uh, my direct family has not been affected so yay. I hope you're all well and dealing with the stressful situation that is this pandemic and on top of that other uh, Uh, what's the word? Injustices? Yeah. I will talk about that a bit at the end, I think. I'm, I don't know, it's going to be at, off the top of my head. So, And maybe I'm not the right person to talk about it and maybe I am, I don't know. We'll figure it out, but... I worked on one thing this May and I did have a new start because that's uh, what I was intending to do anyway. Uh, so let's just do the new start first because I purchased this heavily annotated. <laughs> it's a digital pattern by Gera. If you, if you search for that, I got it at creativepoppy.com. Uh, this is uh, the Anne Frank sampler, I think it's called. No, just Anne Frank, Anne Frank. Uh, I fell in love with this when I saw Peppy is Happy on Instagram. Stitched this in a Dutch conversion, which she very, very kindly sent to me um, to use. So I made a start. I found a fabric that is quite blue. I think it's, a, I don't know, I think it might be a Swigart by the, just how it feels. But I'm not sure of the colorway because I think this was, this was sent to me by Michelle, I think, not sure. But I made a start on the bottom because, I don't know, that was the easiest part to start, I guess, counting wise. So the barbed wire from the concentration camp. And I started this on our... Uh, National Memorial Day, that is the day when we um, commemorate all of those who have lost their lives in any conflict that we were involved in or we sent troops to since World War II, including uh, civilians as well as military uh, personnel. So I thought that was fitting to start and rank on that day. And as you can see, I worked on it that day and did a work on the barbed wire. And then the next day, we, uh, uh, May 5th, we celebrate our liberation from World War II. So uh, I thought it was uh, good to continue one more day and add the piece uh, on the bottom. So um, now that I look at it, I might bring this to my holiday this week. I don't know, might have to. 
That'd be fun to stitch on it. Also, when I started working on it, I was thinking about my trip to Washington DC last year and I spent a day at the uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum there which I can highly recommend you, you visit because it's very impressive and um, uh, being from Europe there are a lot of places in Europe where you can go and see the World War II history but this was done from a very specific perspective and it's very important that you have a look at that. Um, when you go there, you get this, which is an identification card. They have printed out those for uh, people who were, who lived through the Holocaust and either did or did not uh, survive. Um, so I had this with me um, I'm not going to share too much personal information, but I'm just going to say this uh, this ID belonged to Ruth and she was the same age as the elder sister of Anne Frank and um, oh, Margot, Margot Frank. Um, so that was special and when I re read her story again, I realized they were both, I think in Auschwitz. Let me check. Yeah, they were both in Auschwitz around the same time and they were both deported from Auschwitz to different camps. Um, I will share just a picture because it reminded me of how Anna looked as well a bit. Just the way the hair is. I guess it's from that time. But uh, Ruth survived so that was something to cling on to. So she was with me during the stitching, which was nice. And then moving on to lighter subjects, I guess, because uh, Chatelaine, uh, I wanted to get a good chunk done on my Chatelaine. I was a bit optimistic in thinking I might get it all done, the stitching, but I did not stitch every day. I've had a few rough days in this month with migraines uh, and just basically uh, mental stress and I couldn't stitch. So uh, I managed, I still managed to do a lot. So what I will do is I will show you and then I might insert a, a picture of the day I started working on our dismay and the day that I finished just to show you how much I got done. So, I'll take off the top scroll bar so you can see. Ta-da! Here is my current progress picture of uh, Rajasthan Lotus Pond. Um, I absolutely love these blues and greens. Um, this bottom part is all, I think it's called Peacock Blue by Gloriana. I, I adore that. That is such a great mix of greens and blues. Well, teals or petrol as we would call those dark teals. Um, yeah, and so this is the reflection in the water of the building, which is almost done. And then just below this is a, a range of flowers. And that will be the bottom of the design. I will show you the picture of what it should look like when it's finished or should what it supposed hang on I need to get it because I'm not prepared I thought I had everything laid out on the couch except of course this so this is the so as you can see I have reached these reflections and I've been I've been working on these blue parts so basically these flowers uh, what I need to finish and then finish off the border and then I need to do backstitching in the building and beading and then it will be done. So I'm not there yet but I got a really big chunk of pure stitching done this May which I'm really pleased about. So yay!
So I, ha I just want to thank everybody who joined in in the hashtag on Instagram. Um, it should be still up. So Martina Mania was the one we used. Um, there are a couple of them that, that showed their progress and it was really nice to see. Gorgeous colors and I think everybody was enjoying it. So <laughs> we might have to do that again next year. I uh, was surprised at uh, how I didn't get bored. Well, at the last day, I really had to push myself to finish the last color. But other than that, I really just stitched and stitched and stitched. And it helped that I had a few long uh, Zoom sessions with friends who were stitching as well. Uh, that got, got a few, a good chunk of uh, stitching in during those days. So yeah, but we're going to be back to stitch what you want, when you want, for the rest of the year, I think. I need to start, I want to start two things. I promise to start one thing. So I think those are going to be next, they're going to be smalls. But other than that, we're on track, I guess. I don't know. This year is crazy, weird. I mean, it's June. So, because last year I started the hashtag May We Finish, I decided to fully finish some things that I've been putting off um, or that I just had in my stash to finish at, a, at one point. Uh, I think there was only two things, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so one of them was a pattern by Renata Parolin that I took with me on my trip to Washington and I finished but I didn't fully finish it when I got home and here is the fully finished object so this is Fleur A3 number 9 I think I will put the information in the thingy the description of the video and I had this pom-pom from XGU design and, and I had this fabric so I just decided to finish it as a pillow. I love this. Oh God, I, I mean, I didn't change anything in the colors. I love it. Yeah. And I also finally tackled my Salem Remembered. Well, my Salem commemorative combination chart. This is a combination of three chart which I kind of rearrange into a sampler I guess. And I wanted to make it into a wall hanging and I've had the fabric for it for over a year but I was too scared to start stitching on it and then finally I decided to look up some tutorials because I wanted to do mitered edges in two colors and I've never done anything like that before, but I, I watched some tutorials and I think for the first time I did a great job. And I, I turned it into a wall hanging and there is my final results. So this is the entire wall hanging. And as you can see, the mitered edges are looking pretty crisp, except for one, hang on. Uh, over here, no, over here, see I messed up a bit here, but for my first try I am so proud of myself and I just added a long sleeve so that I can uh, put it over my rod that I keep my wool hangings on and here is another look at the stitching. I am so proud of my finish and the back is just the same green fabric. I'm really pleased with the fabric that I picked. It has a really, the, the green has a really, it's showing a brown in my screen, but it's more of an army green. And it has this really fine dotted pattern on it that you can hardly see unless you really look at it. And then this red, you can see has a little pattern on it as well. Yeah, so they look a bit vintagey. And the colors match so well. Yeah, 
really happy with this. It's, it's been hanging on my wall for a while now, but now it's going to go into storage until we get back to more darker days in fall. Although, I guess, looking at the dates, June 12th, I think? June 20 is the first, first trial and uh, execution of the first victim, so you might as well put it up on June, I guess, I don't know. Do you do you, I guess? Um, so that's all I've been stitching on, but I did uh, get some things in the mail and some of them were uh, pur purchases and some of them were surprises. Uh, it was my birthday in May and thank you for those who sent me things, cards, gifts. I really appreciate them. I'm not the type of person that celebrates my birthday. Um, um, but I did spend it with my parents in the evening, which was amazing that we could do that in this time and do it safely. And yeah, that was my way of celebrating with my parents because since they chose to have me, it, I, I consider it more their celebration than mine. <laughs> I had no say in when I was born or not. But for my birthday, uh, Julia was very kind and sent me a surprise with a great card and a little pillow in green, yay! Yeah, this is going to get a place of honor. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, she had a D-stash a while back and the charts that she sent were... I bought these, but she sent them to me as a gift, so... I was blown away by that. I did not see that coming. But now I have the full set of these. Uh, you may remember that this one, the Green Earth, is one that I have already done. But this is going to find a good home somewhere. But these I have not done. And this, this one included the pack as well. So this is the, this is the Elements series, in case you're wondering. The four Elements series that we have. Earth, this is wind, this is uh, water, and this is fire, I think, yeah. So yeah, I love these, and I will definitely find some time and make these someday. Thank you again, Julia. That was really nice, and it blew me out. I did not see that coming. Um... Also, what I did not see coming, uh, in February of this year, I ordered some needle minders on Etsy from an Australian shop. And uh, they were sent very quickly, but I waited and waited and waited and they didn't show up. So I contacted the seller and we discussed what to do. And he was very helpful and obliging and uh, because after I think eight weeks we decided well this is a lost cause they are gone he fully reimbursed me which was he didn't have to do that but I really appreciated it and then uh, 14 weeks after I ordered them guess what showed up in my mailbox uh, so I contacted him and we discussed what to do and we came to an agreement and I did pay for these. Um, there are more, but I'm not going to show you those because they're gifts. <laughs> and one is on a project. But yeah, I love these little Japanese style kawaii uh, things. And of course, a scarab. How could I? So, uh, as always, this is not really in focus. So go check out Ginger Stitch AU. I will put him here. And put a link to his Etsy shop in the description. Great selection of needle miters. Excellent service. Uh, they come really well packaged. I have no complaints at all. Please go check him out and see if you can find something you like on his site. Uh, also, what I have been uh, waiting for is um, Silk of the Month. I always forget if it's Silk of the Month or... 
color of the month. But I am uh, part of that club for Silks for You, where they send out four skeins of their regular line every month, uh, if you pay for them, of course. And I have been waiting for my March and my April shipments. They have not reached me yet, but since I now know that it might take 14 weeks, I'm sure that's on up. <laughs> What I understand now is that a lot of Australia Post has been going by sea mail in the last few months, but they have now returned back to air mail because I received my May package from Silks for You. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the May Silks for You Silk of the Month uh, set, look away now because I'm going to show you. So I'm, I already know these colors are a bit hard to, to get right, but uh, let's see. This is, turn, this is looking pretty accurately, the greens and the purple, uh, pinks, and there's a little bit of light blue in there, periwinkle blue. Love that. And to match those we have this beautiful, which is turning up very bright, but it's, it's not that bright at all. It's, a, a muted pink. It's the same pink as in the, the one I showed you just now. Then we have this green, which is yeah showing up pretty accurately. It's a, a, bit, a bit of a sea foam. And then we have this one variegated, which is another beautiful one. Oh, the, oh geez, this are showing up really well this way. Um, so this is greenish, sea foamish green purpley variegated and they make a lovely set together I will I will add the numbers in them in the here somewhere when I show them later but here is this full set look at that again this is too bright on screen but the rest are pretty accurate yeah I love them so I am in anticipation of when the others will arrive. <laughs> I just, I'm, it's kind of a sport now to see when they will turn up, you know, it's exciting. And I, I messaged Joe, Joe Mason from Silk For You just to keep in touch about when, um, when things are arriving so that she knows and can communicate with other customers who are more worried than me about shipping times. Um, so yeah, uh, then uh, what also came, yeah, Inspirations magazine, I think this also came by airmail because this was, I think it was just on, on time and just, uh, and I'm gonna have to sneeze and just so you know what's in here, I mean, I'm going to take this with me on vacation because I haven't really had time to look through it. But yeah, I mean, it's just such a gorgeous magazine. I can still highly, highly recommend it. And um, Anna, you might want to look away because this might be up your alley. Uh, pin cushions. And it comes in a digital subscription, uh, uh, so if you're worried about shipping costs, it might make it more interesting. This white work is gorgeous too. Well, it's hard to see, but... It's just... I love it. Even if you're not making anything out of this, it's still, oh my God, look at this. I mean, seriously, that is amazing. Yeah, I love that. I love a lot of open work on Hardanger, Hardanger, whatever. Little birdie bird. And then a beautiful wreath. 
with poppies that could be a new a good commemorative thing if you add like uh, initials and a date yeah <laughs> oh yeah and of course oh come on they have to have a bigger oh here this is a close-up of the stitched pomegranate look at that i mean seriously that's stitched that's amazing and it's a project so you can try and do it yourself this is this is uh how it's framed mine seriously amazing so and then i was uh i haven't been watching a lot of lost tube videos and i do apologize for those that are missing my comments because i just um i'm not in the right headspace for a lot of things including uh focusing on floss tube videos but i have watched a few and one that i am not sorry that i watched was one by nicola parkman from hands across the sea uh, where she shared a dutch uh, stitching book that i was not familiar with and that she had received as a gift from a friend and of course i did what everybody does i paused the video and i googled it and i found it and i bought it and it's here yay this is not um your a regular book where it is about motifs or this is really about uh, uh, a whole catalog of samplers and a lot of uh, samplers with um, how do you call it I, forget, I keep forgetting how you call this uh, we call it stoplappe so it is uh, a, a repair, uh, to repair fabric there's, there's stitches you can do I really 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 like these and I have a pattern or two in my stash that I want to make but it really is a lot about history and uh, information about sp specific samplers and it's partly in French I'm just seeing what I haven't noticed that before but yeah, they also have explanation of uh, motifs in samplers, but it's all about the Dutch samplers. Um, it's about 350 years of history of female and uh, needlework in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, so it's really more of a history of embroidery than it is about uh, how to stitch a sampler or yeah love it. it it is in dutch and apparently also in french uh, let's see why that is might be because it's uh yeah so it's in french and dutch so i'm guessing it's a belgian publication then oh yeah because it also has a french subtitle so if you speak French, you might want to check it out and look for this title. Ophile de Marquard. I will put the info in the description and you can Google for it. And because I was Googling for embroidery books, I came across this one on bol.com. And it's been on my wish list. Not high, but it was such a good price. It's a second hand book. It has. It was such a good price, and it's in decent shape. And this one does have uh, some uh, patterns from some of the samplers that are discussed. This basically is a book about, I think, about twenty samplers that are in the collection of the author, and she des describes the samplers, and some of them are in in here as a uh, pattern. If you want me to do a full flip through, let me know. I will also let you know which of the samplers are in the um, are made into patterns in this book because I, I couldn't find that anywhere. So let me know if you want a flip through of this. And I will also add a link to the book in the description. 
so that leaves me with the last purchase I did. I did a, I made a digital purchase. I want to make a biscornu for someone. And I was looking for some on Etsy and I came across some that I favorited like years ago. And I thought, well, I might as well get these because they are probably going to be very appropriate. So this is one that I got. I will link the Etsy store in the description. But they are from Rainburst Embroidery. So this is the one I got. I won't be doing it in this colorway, but I will be working on it this weekend or this week. And this is the Viola one, which I love. The pictures are not that great because my printer is not that great at the moment, but go check out. Uh, I will link them in the... And there was one more. Oh yeah, I love this one too. The Bittersweet September. really like these. The butterflies is one that I'm going to be working on. So that's it for stitching things. Yeah. A bit of reading. Uh, I read one book twice <laughs> because I'm part of the book club by uh, started by on names again Caroline at off the grid needle arts needleworks um, which is uh, a book club for stitches and they will be discussing this book in June so I'm looking if you want I will add the, uh, the name of the Facebook group below so you can check it out um, this month we will be discussing the, the book that we've been reading, which is called The Lace Reader. Um, by a diff difficult name to pronounce, Brunonia Berry, The Lace Reader. I had to read it twice because I was very confused by it. And when I read it the second time, I realized why. It wasn't that it was uh, my, uh, because it's my second language, English. It was uh, part of the plot. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not going to divulge too much into discussing this because that's what the book club is for. But yeah, if you want to join us and check it out, uh, there's still some time. I don't think they have set the date yet for when this book will be discussed. So. And it is, how long is it? Uh, it is, okay, it's about 12 hours on audio book. So yeah, it will take, uh, if you only have an hour every evening, then it will take you two weeks to read it, uh, roughly. Um, yeah, the other one, which I started uh, a little while ago and then put aside because it was a book that uh, required my full attention. It wasn't something I could just, well, I, maybe it was more of my mindset wasn't in the right place at the time I started it, but yeah. Um, Considering what is going on at the moment in the United States and what is going on probably in a lot of places in the world. I'm trying to make this look like not a talking head. Let's, let's see if I can fix this. Okay, take two. <laughs> I was fiddling with my camera too much that I accidentally turned it off. So I hope it's saved. Uh, but uh, as I was trying to say, I was reading this book a while back, but I wasn't in the right headspace for it. And I was recently more able to fully focus on it. And I did. And um, it happened to coincide with uh, current affairs that are happening in the United States. Um, and it is this book, White Fragility. It was recommended to me by Julia, actually. It is one of the books I think you should read as a white person 
to understand your role in racism and how to uh, approach it um, and why people get uh, defensive so easily when white people, I should say, get defensive so easily when talking about racism. Oh, damn it. Here we go again. I hope this works. <laughs> so, um, getting distracted. Sorry about that. Um, I think it's important that every white person, person explores their part in racism because um, uh, we, I'm going to speak as a white person, uh, tend to think that it is not something that we actively uh, promote, but um, we might not be aware of how racism actually works because we're not the victims of it. Um, so, yeah, this book really helped me revisit some of the experiences in my past and um, my own prejudices and I'm going to read a lot more because no one is ever fully uh, aware of their behavior and prejudice um, but it really helps at least to work on it and it offers some good guidelines as to how you can approach things um, uh, yeah I just, it's, it's important to realize that racism is systemic and that if you're a white person you don't really think so because you don't experience, experience the negative sides of the systemic racism. Um, but it's definitely there. And I can safely say it's probably there in every country, not just in the United States. It is currently very blatant in the United States that there's problems, but um, we have our own issues here in the Netherlands. I've spoken to it about this, this before, about uh, some of the elements in the Sinterklaas celebration that are, in my opinion, definitely racist and should be changed. And that is not the opinion of everybody, unfortunately. But yeah, um, it does help understand how to approach the subject in a way that you might be able to talk to about this with other white people without uh, pushing them into a defensive position um, because that's not helpful. Um, it might also help um, be more open for yourself when you are uh, confronted with feedback on your own prejudice so yeah I think it's definitely a book uh, I can recommend to anyone who is white especially uh, because that's the focus group that the book is written for um, and I think I saw someone who had posted on Facebook some a list of 75 things you can do as a white person about racism and I might try and find that and add the link because you don't need to ask a black person or a person of color tips about what, which books to read for racism because that shouldn't be on them, that's on you. Okay, enough said, well not enough said but well, yeah, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so that's all I read. Um, not sure what I'm going to read next. Uh, there's a few books I have lined up in Audible that uh, I might pick up. Um, so, but they're mostly fantasy things. And I don't know, I might not be in the mood for that. I have been playing a bit of uh, uh, games. I just finished as the, uh, the first Assassin, Assassin's Creed game. Uh, uh, if you're not a gamer, then bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, um, it was an interesting experience for me because I absolutely love elements of the game. Uh, I know Ubisoft from the Myst series, which I adored and got frustrated by as well, but not. But I got frustrated in this game because the gameplay is horrible. Uh, if you're a keyboard and mouse player, um, they don't really offer you any guidelines as to how the keys... They give uh, the controller keys for your uh, moves, but not the translation into keyboard keys. And I just get, kept forgetting what combinations to use and that made the fight scenes a bit rough. <laughs> but manageable in the end anyway, it's just... Uh, if you could, uh, point and click a lot during the fight scenes, you'll get through them anyway. But uh, other than that, I absolutely loved the historical setting. I did not enjoy the storyline that much. It didn't feel very convincing to me. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have any love for the protagonist in this game. The, the development of the characters was a bit chunky. So, but still, <laughs> I wrote a review on Steam about it. I, I think I've, I've got this love-hate relationship now with the series. I'm going to go ahead and find um, series the second game, because what I've heard is that the uh, issues with the control uh, gets a lot better uh, after the first game. So I'll keep my eye on that for that when there's a sale on, I'll get one of those. Um, but yeah, can I recommend it? I did recommend it on Steam, but with a caveat that if you're a mouse and keyboard player, you might not enjoy it that much. <laughs> yeah, weirdest review I have ever had to write, I think. But yeah, it was entertaining enough that I finished the game. So that's saying something, right? And I'm currently working playing a Sherlock Holmes game, which is, well, it's okay. It's not very challenging, but it's keeping me entertained. Uh, this week I have a holiday week, so I probably won't be posting a lot on Instagram. And uh, so I'm going to say probably in two weeks I'm going to do another video. I don't know. I I haven't been in the headspace or physically well enough to do a video this past month, so who knows? Uh, but for now, I am just going to say I hope you are all well, I hope you are stitching, and I hope you are not ignoring things, social... Um, Words are hard to find uh, if you don't speak English a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you're not ignoring things that are going on. I, I can understand if you are, because there's a lot of stress factors going on, but some people have to deal with these factors no matter what. And um, we have a choice to help them out or not. And I think that's an obvious choice. Enough said for now. Um, we have a day off today because it is Pentecost, I think it's called. So it's June the 1st and I need to do a lot of washing because it's sunny and I can dry my clothes outside, which is uh, wonderful. And other than that, probably need to do some cleaning. <laughs> I don't know how to end these things anymore. I'm just going to say goodbye. Take care. Stay safe. Be kind.